Hello guys, in the previous video we learned how to connect Factory I.O. with OpenPLC and how to um, solve scene 1. Today we're going to open another scene. So you come on the welcome screen, you press scenes, and then scene 2. From A to B, set and reset, transport a box from sensor A to sensor B. We open the scene, and the scene is this. It's just an entry conveyor, a sensor A, a conveyor, and a sensor B. If you see and remember from previous video, the sensors are now yellow, so they're now 1 if they don't see a box. They become 0 when they see a box. So it's 1 when they see the reflector, and 0 when they don't see it. Then we also have this entry conveyor. It's uh, turned blue. And the no this conveyor is white. Why it's blue? If you press play, you will see it runs. I didn't program anything yet, and it works. So, if you press on it, you will see it's forced. So forced means it's electrical bypass, you could say. So it works uh, always. So we don't have to bother programming this conveyor in this exam. So. This conveyor, the entry conveyor, we don't have to program. Then we have a sensor A, the conveyor, and a sensor B. If you don't see these tags, you have to press this button to see the sensor tags and the actuator tags. So sensors are inputs, actuators like the conveyor are outputs. So we're going to select a driver, and then Modbus TCP IP server, that's how we make the connection. It's over Modbus, it's a protocol, but we don't dive too deep uh, in Modbus yet. And it will create this for you. So normally your IP address would be the same as in the previous video, also your sli slave ID and the port. But you can go to configuration and change the inputs and outputs. If you remember from previous video, we set our slave device in OpenPLC runtime to 8 inputs. So I'm going to change this to 8, 8 outputs, 2 analog inputs that we'll call here register inputs, and 2 analog outputs with are the register outputs here. So then we go back and we become this, our, our server who is connected with OpenPLC. So sensor A is an input 0. If you remember, it starts with uh, IX100.0, so that's the address of sensor A. Sensor B is IX100.1. And then we have the conveyor, it's an output. The address is started at uh, QX, so QX100.0. So we made our connection, but we didn't program anything yet. So we will start program programming in OpenPLC Editor. So we open OpenPLC Editor. And we will start by creating a new project. So we press here, New Project. And you have to save it in uh, an empty scene. So in an empty folder. So we will make a new folder. We call it Scene 2 and YouTube. And then we have to select that empty folder. So this window will prompt to uh, give it one program at least. So we're going to call this main. It's the type of program and language. We, we will start using the first language we will learn is a ladder diagram. So LD for short. Press OK. And the first thing we're going to do before we program is um, defining our inputs and outputs variables. So we have plus to add variable, and then we have to give it a name. So I will call it i from input underscore sensor a. The type, we're still using base types and then bool. The other types we will learn when the time is there so when we can um, use it in a practical way it's easier to learn so base type bool from uh, 
uh, boolean so it's either one or zero true or false so the variable i sensor a can only have two states on or off uh, true or false it's what you call it zero or one the location you have to press a percentage first and then i x 100 point zero was the first uh, input and on documentation you can call it here sensor a we create a new variable so you can just uh, leave it on this one and press plus so it will copy the previous uh, variable properties so and uh, the class you can also choose your input or output but we're working uh, completely virtual, so we don't have physical inputs or outputs, so that's why it's on local. With the real PLC it would be an input and you will have to define of which card it comes, but we just leave it here at local. Call it here also sensor B in the comments, then we create another variable, and that will be our conveyor. So Q conveyor. It's also a bool, so 1 or 0, on or off. But it's not an input, but an output. So QX and the, the outputs also start on the address 100.0. And we call it here conveyor. So now we define our inputs and outputs that we're going to use in factory IO. Now a little bit about ladder diagram. So PLC started in the 80s. and before that, people used uh, mostly relay logic and latches and electronic components, but mostly relay logic in automation because it was reliable. Relay logic, it's all electrical. Uh, all the logic is in electrical schematics and in relays. And then they start using PLC. So many of the machine builders were electrical engineers and you have to start programming also on the factory floor, uh, most technicians were electricians who solved the automation problems. So that's why they, they created this ladder diagram a language and it looks like an electrical uh, schematic. So we're just going to start programming it and I will explain as we go. So we have here create a new power rail, so power rail press on it, and we press where we want it, and then we start with the left power rail on the left side, we press it again, and we make a right power rail on the right side. So these power rails are like plus and minus, and if you put uh, something in between, like an, uh, a coil, so just gonna grab this, uh, select it, and press it, a coil, then, so as variable, for example, we're going to use Q conveyor as a coil, so as an output. And we have this. If you now connect the conveyor with the left coil, and on the other side with the right coil, if you would do this electrical, and this is the plus and this is the minus, there would be a current, and Q conveyor would be on. So that's how you know it would be on. So if you simulate this, this will also be the case, but it's not very um, practical just to turn on the conveyor with a PLC. We have to put some logic in. So our sensors are inputs. So back in the old days, we used contacts. Um, uh, the contacts could be proximity switches or mechanical switches, and they would close and open. We have two kinds of contacts, a normal open, who is normally open in rest state so it's when it's not uh, actuated on it's open and normal closed it's normally closed um, when nothing is happening so if you remember our uh, sensors they are uh, one if there is nothing in front of it and zero when they are actuated so you can compare them with a normally closed contact back to open plc so how do you create contacts? Press here, var, and it's um, visualized by these two uh, 
stripes. Then you have to choose your variable, for example, sensor A, that's the first sensor uh, of our conveyor. Then you have modifiers, rising edge and falling edge, uh, that's something for later. But you have here also normal and negated. If you press normal, then it's like a normal open contact. So if the input from the PLC is 1, it will close. And if the input in the PLC that comes to the PLC is 0, it's open. But if you want to use um, other logic, you can also put it on the gated, and then it will change. So if the input in the PLC that comes to the PLC is 1, it will become a 0. If the input that comes on the PLC is 0, it becomes a 1. It's very um, useful, for example, for our sensors. If there is a, a box in front of it, it's one. Uh, it's zero. So, if you want to detect a box, if you want to uh, make the conveyor run, when the box is in front of the sensor, then you know the input from the sensor is zero, and you want to uh, let the conveyor run. So you want that zero to be inverted to one to drive the conveyor. So we're gonna do that right here. So we have negated it, then we connect it in series, so another electrical thing. And then if the sensor A is not on, is, is um, zero, the conveyor will run, because the zero becomes a one. You can also simulate this by running on this little uh, man, by clicking on this running man. And then you have to call, uh, you just have to Put the glasses on on the instance. If we come to function blocks, I will explain what instances are, but just click on it. And you will see it will run because this is not connected to factory IO. So now if you start the PLC and you don't uh, use initial value, it will be zero by default. So now it's a zero, so um, it's it sees a box, but if we press here, force opt on true, so if it's a 1, like uh, now, it doesn't see a box, and the conveyor should run. So, maybe it's best to put it in practice, so we stop the PLC simulation. Um, you still have this green line, you can just click on main again, and then you can edit things. Then we generate program for open PLC runtime. We press on it. We wait a little bit. And the program is created for PLC runtime. So you have to give it a name. YouTube. So scene to YouTube. Then we run the open PLC runtime. So this is our virtual PC that's running in the background on our desktop and we can interface it to our web browser. So open PLC is running now, if you wait a little bit. So we have to go to this website and then we can interface with it. We can load programs and start it. So go to Google. I made a shortcut, so I would advise to create also a shortcut so you don't have to uh, Type it in. So this is the address you have to go. Username and password is also open PLC again. And then you can see it stopped. Uh, it was another scene already in. I already made a scene to YouTube, but we will make a new one. So scene to YouTube. Upload the program and then you have to give it a name. I will change name to uh, YouTube new and we upload the program so it's compiling and then we go to dashboard we start the PLC and you can also um, monitor the input and output so now it's running Sensor A is uh, true as an input because it uh, sees a reflector, sensor B also, and the conveyor is off. So we open it again. 
and we're gonna start the scene. So it runs, see the sensor, and the conveyor will run. But as you can see, the conveyor will stop because it's only run when sensor A and uh, when sensor A sees the box. So it doesn't see the box right now, so it stops. So how do we solve this? Some of you guys maybe think of timers or something like that, but that's a bad practice to use timers for uh, situations like this. So they made something that's called set reset. So now I will explain that. We go back to open PLC editor. So what you have done, you can set this output and it will be set as long you as long as you don't reset it. So you press on the output, you double click on it, and then you click set. You'll see it here. So it will be set as long as the conveyor works. This also comes from relay logic, so you can also do this with a relay, so put in a contact over the relay, that if the relay is uh, activated, it will take over. But in PLC languages, it's like this. And it's just to uh, make the transition from electrical to uh, PLC uh, easy and simple. So we set it when sensor A uh, sees the conveyor. So the conveyor will start running. And we want to stop it when it sees sensor B. Then it has to reset. So we will, could copy this or we will make it again for this time. So back uh, left power rail, right power rail, and contact or other sensor. So variable sensor B, negate it. And then again, our conveyor as a coil, so like an output. And we want to reset it conveyor. So that would reset the conveyor. So we connect them in series. Oh. Like this. We create a program generate PLC program. We just overwrite the previous file. Save. Do you want to replace it? Yes. Then we go to the open PLC runtime. We go back to programs. And then we can uh, update this program. Just we clicked on it. The program is running right now. You can click on your program, then update the program. It's easier because you don't have to fill the name in again. We choose a file and normally it's the folder, it opens the folder where you're previously in and then upload the program. And then go back to the dashboard and you can start the PLC. Now it's running. Go back to factory IO and we press play and see what's happening. So the conveyor stops. It will start when sensor a sees the box, so it's setting the conveyor and it will reset the conveyor when sensor B is reached. So this was the solution for scene 2, so it's a very simple program in ladder. So I don't know which, so this is the first language we cover, so you can put a simple logic in ladder diagrams. I'm used to work with function block di diagrams. You have a little bit more um, advantages with function block diagrams. So we will work uh, next time on function block diagrams to learn the PLC language of function blocks. So this was it for this video. If you don't want to miss future PLC tutorials or Arduino projects, Please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.